Bill Carroll, Team MBS Media here live in beautiful Mobile, Alabama. And I'm going to go a little deeper than I was in my very short video that you probably hopefully have already seen if you are following us. Like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. So I gave you a once over lightly a few of my favorite players. I'm going to go deeper into some of the players that stood out and also some players that frankly struggled and in some cases why perhaps they struggled. And I'm going to start with the quarterbacks. Frankly, as I said, none of them were what I would call standouts, where you said, oh yeah, this guy's had a great week. There were good moments, up and down moments, I'd say for every single one of them. I'll start with probably the one that's the most well-known name, Michael Penix Jr., the Tampa, Florida native, started his college career at Indiana, later transferred to... Um, Washington, and of course, for those that complain about the transfer portal, think about how differently the careers of people like Justin Fields, Joe Burrow, Russell Wilson, uh, Kyler Murray, and like I said, obviously Michael Penix. I mean, we've seen Jaden Daniels also was another person who was a, a great uh, example of the well, the very nature of the, the giving and the taking away, as you might say, in the uh, transfer portal situation. But uh, you saw Pinnock show good arm strength. You saw him occasionally be late, which is to be expected. You know, these are players that, in most cases, these quarterbacks have never, ever, ever played with before. So uh, it's very new to them. They don't know these players' tendencies. They don't know, you know exactly how fast they are. Things like that. Uh, Carter Bradley son of, of Gus Bradley, had moments as well. Uh, threw a couple of really good passes, showed a little more mobility maybe than I'd, I'd seen when I watched him on tape from his uh, college career. Uh, he'll need to continue to show people. He's probably seen as a potential career backup, but he'll need to show people that he can have consistent zip, particularly on those uh, passes outside the numbers, like deep comebacks and deep outs and uh, deep corner routes. I'm going to jump over to the defense side of the ball and talk about Missouri's corner. Um, Chris Abrams Drain, or KAD as some people call him, came in at 5'11 and 3 quarters, which is good. Uh, came in at 173 pounds, which is, you'd probably want to give him a little, you know, probably put about 8 to 12 pounds on him. 8 to 70 chance, slightly below average, and then 31. And one eighth inch arms also slightly below, you know, what some teams ideally look for. But uh, competitive in coverage, he and his teammate and his rake straw are probably battling for that second, third, th or third, fourth position amongst the corners here. I right, talked about Quinion a lot, who is clearly the best corner here, and some have called him the best defensive prospect, and a few have even called him the best prospect. Period here in Mobile, but we'll get to him in a moment. Uh, but he overall had a good week. Rasheen Ali from Marshall is a player I have I've liked. He had a heck. He helped uh, win me a college fantasy football league a couple years ago. Took a year away for a personal leave, uh, and then Kalen Laborn had a good year, and now he's back. Uh, 5'11", 3'8", 204 pounds. Uh, arm length, once again, dead on average-ish, 31 and eight. Eight and seven inches hands, slightly below ideal, but not not terrible. And uh, Javon Baker from UCF has had a few moments. He's your sort of classic height, weight, speed guy. Not as developed as a route runner as some of the others. And I'd like to see him, if he's going to be a height, weight, speed guy, go up and high put the ball a little better. Uh, but I want to spend a, a little more time on the next prospect. So Jaheim Bell, uh, Florida State by way of South Carolina. 6-1 and 7 eights, which is a bit of a red flag if you're going to play tight end. So he's probably more seen as an H-back move guy. Maybe even some teams might want to work him at fullback. I think that'd be a waste of his talents. But he'll be one of those guys who might be that sort of Cam uh, Hayward. Not Cam Hayward. Um, I know I was going to do that. Uh, the other son. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's very thick, very well put together. I mean, despite being 6178, which was a little below, you know, ideal, he's 244, very, very 
very solid pounds. And, you know, definitely has the ability to move people, right? I mean, he, he can, while he's not a perfect blocker, just because he hasn't done it as much as, um, as, you know, guys who are more traditional, you know, inline wide tight ends, he shows you something. Especially if you get him on the move as a blocker, you know, he's a guy that can do some damage as like a wham blocker and he'll probably get he asked to, you know, work out a little bit at fullback. So uh, he has a chance there. But yeah, Connor, Connor Hayward is the player that he'll get compared to. I think he might be a little more quick and athletic than Connor Hayward was coming out. A couple more players that I want to make sure I mention. Uh, I mentioned Carter Bradley briefly before, and you know, one of the taller quarterbacks here at 6'3 on the nose, 218, and 9 and 3 inches hand, so which is slightly above average. But like I said, really, really good job of, of learning things quickly. I just want to see a little him you know, be, show me a little more, uh, you know, not only pocket movement, but movement outside the pocket and pure arm strength. Um, probably the only real questions about him because he's, once again, you know, super, you know, once again, super, you know, well raised, obviously. Um, great interview. He's going to win some people over in the um, room, in the interview room. Two running backs I want to see more out of somebody watching. These two, particularly Ray Davis and Isaiah Davis, no relation. One from Kentucky and one from South Carolina. Ray Davis, of course. <coughs> I think was the second best running back in the SEC this year, draft eligible. And then in Isaiah Davis, you have maybe the best or one of the best FCS running back prospects up there with, you know, Dylan Lobb was also here and a few others. Uh, but uh, he, I need to see him a little bit more, so I'm going to pay special attention to him. He's a guy that's on my list that I haven't really gotten to as much as I'd like to. I already talked about Ryan Flournoy. I've gushed about him. I'll, I'll just say this. That combination being 6'1 and an eighth, 200 pounds, his route running is 35 inch. Sorry, uh, not 35. <laughs> that would be crazy. Um, 31 and a quarter inch arms, which is, you know, once again, maybe just tiny bit below average. But 10 inch hands. Right, big and soft hands. Wanted to make sure I mentioned his hands. Like I said, he's he's helped himself with some people's lives. Cedric Gray is on my list for today. Very athletic. I want to see once again if they run some play action. You know, does he get sucked up towards the line? I know he's a run and hit guy. Could play probably either Mike or Will. He's on my list for today. Another person who made himself money was Michael Hall Jr disruptive on the interior, but only 280 pounds, 6'2 and 3 eighths. I'm not going to compare him to Aaron Donald. Some people will. He's not that kind of power. You know, that kind of power is extremely rare. He doesn't have that kind of power. But <coughs> could he develop uh, <coughs> into a really good interior pass rush kind of specialist player? Uh, my impression is yes. Yes, he could. I'll uh, hit on a couple more players I think are deserving of love and attention. Uh, the other Hall, the other defensive tackle, uh, Gabe Hall, what helps him stand out is his length. A guy that some people will probably think about even looking at as a five technique, you know, odd front defensive end. He's at five and three quarters. He's 290 pounds, 34 and three eighths yards, which is fantastic. Uh, the other Hall, Michael Hall, came in at 33 and a quarter, which is really good. Also, 10 and eighth inch hands on Michael and Gabe, nine and three eighths. But they both showed you explosiveness. Uh, I'm going to pay more attention to offensive linemen, and also I'm going to watch Sam Hartman more closely. Hartman came in at 6'1", and on the nose, and 209. I'm thinking he may have lost a little weight since the season. Probably intentional, probably eating differently, working out differently. Uh, shorter arms, three, 30 and 7 eighths inch, so it means that when you're hit that height and you have a shorter arm, it means that you have to really maneuver the pocket well. So I'll be, he's on my watch list for today. Uh, other players I'll be paying special attention to today. Oh, Jaquan Jackson from Tulane. Talked about him a little bit before. Your classic slot receiver, 5'9", 190. Uh, 
also 30 and a 7th, 8th inch arm, which means, you know, doesn't have that great high point ability, which you wouldn't expect from a guy's height, though, you know, Trey Flowers had it. He's rare. But really good route runner, and obviously he has a chance to really help himself. I'm going to watch a lot of the big guys today. This is going to be Thick Thursday for me. I'm going to spend a lot of time on looking at defensive tackles, offensive guards, offensive tackles, and throwing some tight ends for flavor since I didn't get a chance to spend too much on them. Uh, probably the best safety here is Cameron Kitchens from Miami. Came in at uh, 5'11 and 8th and 206 pounds. Basically your perfect safety body. 31 and a quarter inch arms, 9 and 5 eighths of hands. And my guess is he's going to run to the high 4 fours. And so checks almost all the boxes. I'm going to pay special attention to Lyo Tulatu, who, if he beats a guy with pure speed, he's fine. Has to show me he can disengage and beat blockers occasionally by converting speed to power. Talked about Dylan Laub uh, from New Hampshire, one of my draft crushes. Perfect third down back, 5'9 and 5'8, 210 pounds. Short arms, 29 and 8 inch, uh, but decent size, 9 and a quarter inch hands, which is okay. Xavier Liggett, up and down. Bad day one, better day two. Um, he has a chance to solidify himself day three. Big body, 6'1, 223 pounds. Uh, I was surprised his arms were longer, 31 and 5 eighths, which is not bad, just I thought they were long, even longer. I thought he'd be probably in that 32 and a half inch range, but it's fine. Uh, I've mentioned Bo Limmer. I want to give a little more time on Bo Limmer. He, when I look at him, he can play probably either guard or center. I, another guy I think would really fit Pittsburgh now. I'm not sure exactly what Pittsburgh's run game looks like next year because obviously they're moving in a slightly different direction in offensive coordinator. Um, Arthur Smith, I think will use him well if he does keep some of the run schemes that he kept from his days both the Titans and Falcons. But uh, Limmer, big, right? Six, four and a half. A little light, but tall. Uh, he can put on 12 pounds probably in a weekend, but uh, 301 pounds now. Shorter, not shorter, um, but yeah, probably, probably just a tiny bit below average at 31 and a half, which is fine. Um, let's see. Marshawn Lloyd caught the ball well. The uh, USC running back, five, sorry, not five eleven, anything, um, five nine and one eighth, two hundred and seventeen pounds, thick, uh, can run you know around over and through, and I would call him almost like a slightly smaller, slightly less uh, quick, in and out. You might when watch from run around things like that. Say Ezekiel Elliott, a little smaller, not quite as quick and change of direction, not quite as elusive, but. A guy is perfect, once again, for that uh, three-back rotation where you've got one really big back, one really small back, and one medium back. There's your medium back. Everyone's already raved about Lad McConkie. I'm not going to pile more on top of Lad McConkie too much. But 5'11 and a half, 187, and, you know, the old joke would be future Patriot. But the Patriots may be heading in a different direction. But he is a made-to-order slot guy who you can kick outside. A, a player who has a lot of question marks just because – He's new-ish to the position he's currently playing. Is uh, Rice, well now wide receiver, but former quarterback, uh, Luke McCaffrey also you know played at Nebraska and I mean had two I guess third third or third team got him to Rice, but a guy that some people thought would be a really good quarterback at one point was really good at quarterback at Valor Christian High School like his other brothers who played either running back or quarterback there, but uh, he came in. Not quite as tall as Dad, you know, who's almost 6'5", but he's 6'1 and 3 quarters, 202 pounds, very well, <coughs> very well proportioned, moves extremely well, um, tough at the point of uh, catch as well. And while he's not a super refined expert route runner, just because he hasn't done it as much, um, not very deceptive is probably better to put it. He, his routes are crisp enough. They just aren't very deceptive yet. He's still, you can sort of tips his pitches a little bit, but I think he get better at that. Just Bill Carroll, Team MBS Media, part two of uh, my look back at day one and looking forward at day two. So my uh, players that answered questions, players that raised more questions, and then players that I haven't had a chance to get to but will get to today. I left off. A Mr. Young Mr. McCaffrey, uh, one of the three McCaffrey sons who've played high-level college football, uh, Luke, Dylan, and of course everyone's familiar Christian. And the one with the most question marks about him coming out is, is currently this one, right? 
Uh, like I said, Luke obviously was a quarterback, making that transition. He needs probably to go somewhere where they are patient with him. But he has a chance because of his size. He's probably going to run well. Really good hands. Just raw. Uh, he's sort of the opposite end of the spectrum of, say, Lab McConkie, who, while not the biggest cat in the world, what can't he do? You know, fought, well, not be big, you know, 186 pounds, but, you know, he's, if you're okay with a guy who's below six feet tall and 186 pounds, he's got everything else you can ask. And once again, a guy who can be a really good return uh, player in the return game as well. Another uh, player or two to hit on before we close this one out. Uh, another brother, right? Max Melton, brother of Bo, is 5'11, 193 pounds, dead on average. And 32-inch arms, dead on average. 90 hands, dead on average. But quickness and speed, not average at all. People want to see more of him, but he has a very good chance to be successful. Joe Milton, fascinating. He's, I haven't really focused on him, but today he's going to be right at the top of my watch list for Tennessee, you know, Tennessee by way of Michigan. Huge arm. One of the strongest arms, probably one of the top 10 strongest arms I've ever seen. And one of the top five I've ever seen, probably live, close and in person. But 6'5", 235 pounds, you know, just huge. But just 33 eighths of arms, you know, 10 and 3 eighths of hands, which is gigantic. But he's just got to be more accurate, he, especially throw the right ball. Uh, no one to take some off. No one to throw a better touch or anticipation. And to see ahead of his throws, to not try to throw his, you know, throw his way through with just pure arm strength. Bo Nix. Very different, right? He can throw a touch anticipation. Came in a little shorter than advertised, which I expected, 6'1", 7'8". But well-built, 218 pounds, 30 and a quarter inch arms, which is all right, 9'7", inch hands, which is above average. And I think most of us know what he is. Worst case scenario, he's a high-level backup in the league for a very long time. Opposite uh, at the spectrum is a guy like Patrick Paul. Tremendous frame, 6'7", 333 pounds. Is he, you know, an Ogden-type player? Not yet, um, but he has those components. Moves well, large, needs to play lower at times, in fact. Uh, stay away from getting pushed around at times, things like that. But something for him to work on. Uh, he'll getting stronger in the lower body as well. Uh, Ricky Pearsall from Florida is probably a guy that's helped himself a little bit. Still probably seen as a day three guy unless he runs super, super fast. But... Won the way in a little bit, came in at almost 6'1", 6'1", 7'8", 193, could probably put on a few more pounds, but definitely looks the part of a wide receiver four at the NFL level. Spencer Rattler, I don't have time to go too much in depth, but I will talk on it, talk a little touch on him. Obviously, we all know the story, you know, many people's QB1 coming out of high school, 6'1", 219, strong, uh, both in the body and the arm. Uh, 31 and 8th inch arm, so it's, you know, not not great, but it's okay. It's not, you know, below 30 inches where you get worried. Uh, 9 and 3 quarters inch hands, which is actually above average science size. And you saw all the things that made him a guy that people thought was going to be a Heisman Trophy winner. Movement, uh, good zip. Uh, I still want to watch him very closely today. See how... He's not going to really show a lot. Of, the pocket presence doesn't really get shown in a situation like this. He's not going to be really under pressure. But he struggled with that at times in the past and watching the rush. Linnea Smith, another one of those undersized wide receiver types, but terrific return specialist, 5'9 and a quarter, 191. And we'll see what he does. I'll be watching him. I'm a huge Cody Schrader guy. Two time All American at D2 before he moved up. Comes to the SEC at Missouri and leaves the SEC at rushing. What else you know, could you ask for? Five eight and a quarter, two seven. Sorry, two oh seven. So not huge, uh, but strong. And he does have short arms, twenty eight and an eighth inch. Sorry, twenty eight and a quarter inch, which less than ideal. But he can catch the ball well enough. Obviously, outside of his frame is just an issue because of his lack of length. I want to see what some of the safeties do. I'll be watching uh, Tyke Smith. I'll be watching Kyrie Jackson. The um, Oregon safety as well. Those are guys that look the part, and I want to see if they can play the part. The safety class, other than maybe the top one or two, is pretty fluid. These guys have a chance to help themselves. Uh, tight end from Minnesota, Bremen Span Ford is another giant guy. Six, five, and three quarters, 247. 
33 and a quarter inch arms, 10 inch hands, big hands. Okay, blocker. I want to see more from in terms of route running and route deception. I'll be watching also Javon Solomon, slightly undersized if you see him as a hand of the dirt guy. Maybe he's more of a stand up pass rusher, but he's six. He's uh, six feet and three quarters of an inch, 247 pounds. Men's mostly with quickness, but I want to see him convert speed to power a little bit more. And I want to see him uh, show a little more variety in what he does as a pass rusher. Devondre Sweat is a guy who was ticketed for the first round anyway. I'm glad he came. He has really nothing to prove. But 6'4 and a quarter. Sorry, 6'4 and a half. He's three, you know. Uh, three, three, and five eighths in his arms. Like, sort of a made to order D tackle. Can, you know, hold up, you know, when people try to dual block him, strong enough to do that, but also, you know, has a lot of pass rush upside. Another guy who's going to probably have a chance to change the way he is uh, Sione Pakai, who is a safety who also wants to be worked out a little bit on the offensive side of the ball, which is fascinating to me. And, see it. One of my favorite players here is Kamani Vidal. Uh, I have called him various things, but uh, one of my favorite ways to describe him is uh, a waste barrel, you know, garbage bag, uh, can full of concrete, 5'7 and 5'8, but 215 pounds. Very hard to knock off his feet. Tremendous, tremendous balance, tremendous lower body power. Finishes falling forward pretty much 100% of the time. 29, 7, 8 inch arms, so short arms. Short, a lot of things, but powerful. But I like the 9 and 3 eighths inch hands. That's above average. Uh, Tez Walker, Devon Tez Walker. He of the transfer eligibility controversy at Carolina. Straight line speed is above average. Six one and a quarter is obviously good size. And the 197 pounds is not awful. Probably want to put on a few pounds, but I want to see him show uh, some route tempo and you know variants of tempo. Uh, a little more route deception and maybe a little more crispness but you know good height looks like he has good playing speed i want to see him also win at the catch point against some of the better dbs that are here there's some good dbs here you know i mentioned abrams drain quinny mitchell cream of the crop there's a few other guys who i, I think will test him I mentioned uh, two safeties i think have a chance to help themselves another one is the big giant guy james williams and I'll pick both Williams. It's James Williams is the, the big. 6'4", 3'8", 230 pounds. Our teams that see him as a maybe Taylor Rapp type that moves to linebacker. This is a good chance to show that he can maybe do both. Evan Williams, not quite as big. Uh, he's 5'11", and 3'8", 202, so more average size for safety. 29, 5 inches arms, a slightly below average length. But get this, 10-inch hands. Those are big hands uh, on a guy that's his size. I'll be watching him today. I'll watch Eric Watts, the big D lineman from Connecticut. Powerful guy. 6'4 and a half, 277. Gives you that inside-outside versatility, perhaps. Some teams may see him as a 5-tech. And I already mentioned Roman Wilson. He had a terrific week. Made-order slot receiver. But can play outside. 5'10 and a half, 186. He and uh, Lad McConkie have sort of probably been the guys who most consistently have created big separation. And obviously you like that. Uh, two Wilsons off my head this week. Uh, one is a guy that I, I've checked most of the boxes on. That's Peyton Wilson, the linebacker from NC State. Uh, Larangy Long, sort of a Chad Greenway, Audie Cole type. Six four and a quarter, 234. Uh, side to side, you know, lateral mobility is really, really good. Slightly below average arm length at 30 and an eighth inch, but doesn't kill him. Nine inch hands is right on average. Uh, I actually want to watch him in coverage more, and then obviously how he handles being blocked by some of the bigger guys and some of the run fit stuff. And then maybe one of the biggest question marks here is Florida State's Johnny Wilson. At one point, he had second round buzz. I think he's in a fight for his life in terms of his draft uh, draft potential. Really big guy, right? Six seven and sorry, six six and eighth, and two hundred thirty seven pounds. There, see, some teams might wonder if he wants to maybe bulk up and play tight end. It's that sort of Kelvin Benjamin, you know, Devin Fent Fentress kind of situation where Devin Fentress got a situation. We wonder, is it better 
to have a guy play a position he's more used to but will struggle to ever get separation or you try to convert him into a position he maybe doesn't want to play. But 35 and a quarter inch arms is ridiculous. I'm half joking when I talk about, you know, bulking him up and moving him to tackle, but I mean, he's he's got to show more um, quickness in and out of his breaks if he wants to stay uh, a receiver. And even as a red zone threat, you want to create a little bit of separation. So uh, that's looking back a little bit at day one, looking forward to day two. I will have another video for you in a few hours. Once again, please like and subscribe. Thank you for joining me, Bill Carroll, here in beautiful Mobile for Team MBS Media and our show, Draft Central, which you can watch every week on our YouTube channel, Team MBS Media.